16 handicap have both the down the line and face on views going to start with the face on view as the main subject for the lesson is general contact and ball striking with a line on the lead hip we're going to see that your first move does have a little bit of sway of the hips off the ball transferring your weight and pressure to your back foot and then you do make a decent recovery sliding back in front getting a bit on your right toe through impact slightly scooping it but completing the body turn and facing the target on a strong posted left leg with the weight on the left heel try to balance that okay back to the setup again let's look at this in a little bit more detail ball position could be a bit more forward with a three iron and teed lower because when you have that high t you can tend to influence the scoop or flip of the wrist right underneath the ball. The higher the tee is more of just a bailout and going to cost you distance in the long run too, unless you're really hitting up on it and hitting it clean. So get the ball a touch more forward, tee it lower into the ground, and the next movements that we will discuss should help you with the descending angle of attack down on the ball. So back with that line on the lead hip, I'm actually going to get a tour comp to look at how to move the body a specific way in the backswing. Now this is not the most apples to orange comparison, it's an old video of Bryson before he started into the long drive. Uh, but with a line on the lead hip you can see how it is more of a pivot or a pure turn where the face on view does not have the hips displacing or sliding off the ball as we will see over here. And looking at what's causing that, it is mostly in the knees and how you turn your body. The more that you displace your left knee towards the ball and away from the target, the more the hips will follow and the more your weight shifts. If we watch this again closely from Bryson's move, the knee is going to flex, but it is going to flex more straight down towards the ball or even towards the front of the golf ball, whereas you're moving back. Another key note to really take away from this move is how the right leg begins to work towards target and extend with the right cheek toward target as well. If the trail knee gets to the outside of your back foot, that is trouble as your weight can get stuck there and you will have all kinds of contact issues. So that is a big, big change that will need to occur for improved ball striking and downwards angle of attack is that first pivot move in the takeaway. There's plenty of details about the hip pivot and how to flex the knees, but I like this example here because it is a pretty pure turn and there's not a lot of moving parts in old Bryson swing. Another thing that was very briefly mentioned in the comments is lack of depth and extension in the arms. So if we look at this here again, arms are straight and fine with a little forward press in the setup and takeaway. Uh, at this point, your trail elbow, your right elbow, does begin to tuck slightly into the side of your body, which flattens out your swing, but it does cause you lack of depth, and that depth is a power loss. Keeping the right arm away from the body as long as possible will keep the left arm extended as well, and then you can begin to tuck and tighten those angles of the elbow in the downswing. Looking at the P2-ish, position here no, that's more like p3 but how far the arm is away the right arm is away from the body here and then back down to a similar position with how much flex there is now in the right arm the left arm has not changed but the right arm is variable in the flex at several positions through the swing all right enough goofy details about that face on view let's back up clean up and look at your on course swing that you have provided as well on the down the line view so get rid of him back to you and here we are so cleaning up if this is our target here the par 3 said it's a 7 iron about buck 55 ball ends up in the water short right part of that could just be general aim using the camera as a proper alignment to the target which does not look bad your feet are aimed well to the right it is preferred to use the heel line but is much more visible from the toe line and you can still see that it is aimed to the right stance posture from this side don't look too too bad uh, grip I didn't really notice anything as I breeze past your other view uh, real quickly didn't even look at it to be honest with you uh, so I might go back and look at that here and again but looking at your takeaway from the down the line view hands work nicely on the path we know that your body turns but it does sway club face angle looks good here as well so this is why it's important to get both views uh, the sway is not very apparent from this side here although it was from the other view 
Uh, could be a 3-iron versus 7-iron, but in that case, you shouldn't be trying to get much more out of your 3-iron than the other one. But rambling. Uh, here is a visible uh, cue of the lack of extension, where your trail elbow is all nice and tight, keeping you flat, as I said, but not giving you much power as your arms are not too far away from your body. Uh, you do your best to keep that elbow tucked inside. It does okay, but the body stands up and your club strike tends to be on the open toe. Ball hits on the toe with an open face and that will not go anywhere as far as your distance or draw. Now, why did this occur? I, why, why was this such a drastically different result than your driving range? Uh, one, I think it is because your lower body is not nearly as active as it was with the other swing. If we zap back quickly to just look at what your trail foot looks like at impact, P5 on down. Yeah, your heel has lifted and you've been much more aggressive with how you turn your body and straighten your left leg through strike. On the range, you can be confident and aggressive. Carrying over water with the 7 iron 155, right play should be just to hit it over the green. Grab an extra club, that way you know you don't need to try to smoke it. However, you either slipped out of that trail foot or you just were not aggressive enough with your weight transfer back through target. You remain very flat footed for a very long time and there will be no power behind that swing. Also no chance to really get that club face around and get that ball to draw. The 155 number is based on a good strike and that one unfortunately was not it because your lower body did not move. I think that your next uh, work that should be done is going to be notes on this face on view as your path was not the worst thing causing uh, directional issues uh, but more let's get into the uh, fix of your general contact and ball strike we might continue to talk about and work on this face on view so upload your swing to sendaswing.com for a full detailed analysis like this and you will get feedback and notes depending on the level of lesson sendaswing.com good luck